We have exciting information today about residency programs for foreigners in Montenegro. We have discussed how to be an expat in Montenegro through residency through home ownership as well as residency through a corporation and what it takes to retire in Montenegro as a person on social security for example. So we are going to discuss the program now for digital nomads. It's been under discussion for a while but now it looks like it's actually happening and moved forward. So we have our residency expert for Montenegro with us today, and we're excited to bring this information to you if you're a digital nomad. Montenegro is not part of the Schengen Zone, which is a group of 29 countries in Europe that Americans are only allowed to be in 90 days every 180 days. So Montenegro is a great country to do your Schengen shuffle from to reload that Schengen clock. But it's also a great place to stay longer. We've got our residency expert Nino here for the country of Montenegro. He's actually visiting with us here in our living room. And he was giving us some information we weren't expecting to hear. So we thought we'd give a residency update. So as a reminder, if you haven't seen the videos before, Nino is our Montenegro residency expert, so if you want to live in Montenegro, if you want to set up a corporation, retire here, um, buy a home and have your ability to stay here in Montenegro, reach out to us. We'll put you in contact with Nino. You just email us at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com and we'll get you over to Nino. Uh, but Nino has information about the digital nomad yeah. visa in Montenegro, which we remember hearing some whispers about it. We didn't know it was ever going to get off the ground, but tell us about it. What's going on with the digital yeah, nomad? So, so Montenegro adopted the law, uh, which is now in effect, that we do grant uh, digital nomad visas. This is exactly how they're called uh, uh, in our laws. Uh, basically, uh, anyone who wants to come to Montenegro as a tourist or want to stay further, and they make uh, income from doing uh, uh, electronic work or a digital work for some other company abroad uh, and if they are mainly deriving their income from them uh, this means that they get the right to stay in Montenegro they have the right to get uh, two years uh, residency visa extendable for under two years so effectively the person can stay here for a few years uh, doing their digital work and enjoy the beautiful country of Montenegro. Wow and so how much uh, do they need to make? What kind of financial threshold mm -hmm. must the person make and then uh, that would be for a single person and then if they wanted to bring an additional person what's the threshold? Uh, so, so if they want to do, uh, if, if they want to stay the main condition is that they earn minimum 1,350 euros uh, from that work that they provide to uh, outside of Montenegro country. Okay, uh, and that would be for a single person? That would they be for a single person. Uh, they would have to bring, if they wanted to bring a dependent uh, or someone to stay with them, then this would be, uh, increase to, f to finance the lifestyle of this secondary person at, at around of, uh, 600 euros a month. So, so uh, about, okay. so about 2,000 yeah. euros for a couple? Yep. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's great. And is there a mandatory time and country that they have to stay? So they get this visa. Uh, you know, as a resident with a house, you have to be here 11 months a year. Uh, this this has uh, much less uh, of uh, of uh, of time they have to stay in uh, country. So the government will just look that they basically use between three and six months that they stay in the country uh, for this period of time. Usually, we prefer it if it's uh, six months. Uh, uh, so that they show that they actually are staying here and, and utilizing their visa. And they could travel in and out then. Yeah, so, so they that's could, they could yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. If they were staying here over six months, is there a tax obligation that they have for Montenegro? Uh, no, so they would not be considered a tax resident. This is one of the reasons, uh, one of the conditions for the digital nomad visa is that they effectively have an employment agreement with the company uh, abroad and that they and that their uh, uh, health care, pension, uh, social uh, security is all with the country outside so that they are not in effect depending on Montenegro to for their needs. Uh, this is a secondary condition that is so, so, uh, so important to show. So they need to have medical coverage. Uh, yes. So for those of you that don't know, um, I am an agent from the United States and uh, I can represent you for your international health care needs. Um, send me an email and I'll tell you about the international coverage that might suit you. Julie and I, for an example, um, I am 56, I'm getting old. Julie's 49. 
And our insurance costs $240 a month. I have uh, a $2,500 deductible, million dollar cap on us. Um, if you're younger, it's gonna cost you less, but I represent several different companies, some that are great for digital nomads if you're younger. And um, you know, so based on, on your demographic, I'll tell you what's best for you. So send me an email at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out our website, warrenjulietravel.com for uh, links there as well for the insurance. Um, and you can run your own quotes at that location. And also check out our blog, traveling resources there as well. And we have a growing Facebook community. Just look for Warren Julie Travel and join our group there as well. Um, but, uh, you know, Nino, this is really good news for a lot of people. Are there limitations based on uh, countries or is you know, uh, there is no limitations. I mean, the, 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 pen, uh, the, the most important thing is for the person to be able to come as a tourist to Montenegro if their country is not on the list of the countries which do not require visa to come to Montenegro, then in that case the person needs to obtain a tourist visa to Embassy of Montenegro or Serbia, or if they have an existing UK, US, USA or Schengen visa, then they are allowed under the same conditions to come to Montenegro. So meaning that if they've already been traveling through Europe uh, and they have the, the, the visas to travel to Europe, they can easily pop into Montenegro and explore it and then decide if they and want to stay in the platform. Okay, can I have you explain? explain a little bit because you talked about Serbia and your uh, explanation which yes. everybody should know much here with small country what's, what's yeah. the deal with Serbia well the deal is that because we are a small country and we wish to serve as many we wish to have a connection with as many other countries in the world uh, Montenegro does not have that many embassies we're talking about a few dozen embassies uh, trying to cover the whole world so if you're coming from a country that do not have Montenegro embassy or the, the nearest Montenegro embassy is really far away there might be a chance that there is a Serbian embassy in your country and you would then be able to apply to come to Montenegro through Serbian embassy because Serbian embassies do offer this service. Oh, that's that's an interesting collaboration. Yeah. Okay. And I think another very important thing we need to uh, answer would be which documents do you need to have to come with, you know to come to Montenegro and apply for this visa? Uh, so as a tourist, uh, it's a person who just wants to visit touristically, you need to have a book some form of an accommodation, Airbnb and booking is fine if you, if you don't prefer hotels, uh, and some, uh, some means to uh, finance yourself, which is around uh, 10 euros a day uh, for tourists, so we are looking at a few hundred euros could be sufficient. Uh, for, for, for a short holiday in Montenegro. And what about for the digital nomad visa? What type of documents would you uh, need for, for that? Uh, Well, uh, for the digital nomad visa, we would, uh, in a system the government would ask for, uh, for this proof, like an employment agreement with the company. Uh, they need to provide the document to show that this company really exists, so some company registry extract. From the, con uh, from the country uh, where, they, where, the, where the company they work for is based. Uh, some proof that they actually have their uh, social services, insurance, uh, pension covered abroad uh, so that the government of Montenegro knows that they're not going to come here to rely on their services and, every t and also a police clearance certificate to show that they uh, they wanted or anything like that. And is that, does that certificate need to be apostille? Yes, correct. Okay. It, it needs to be apostille in the country unless their country is uh, has a, some kind of an arrangement with Montenegro where the apostille is not required. There is around 20, 30 countries in the world that do not uh, need apostille when they want to bring documents to Montenegro, so we can always assist with is the it, list. And it, is yeah. America one of those countries? Unfortunately, no, oh, okay. <laughs> which is a little bit of a headache. So, yeah, okay. USA, any document coming from USA needs to be apostille. Okay. okay, super. So as a reminder, Julie and I, we are early retirement travelers. We're nomad expats, slow traveling through Europe with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, different places, and we are probably going to end up finally after years of being homeowners in Montenegro, doing our residency by opening a corporation here in Montenegro soon. Uh, we do own a home, which you can do home ownership residency, but that's a whole other story. Check out our video on residency to understand about those different uh, nuances, which we did with Nino earlier this year. And so we hope that you like this video, that you're going to subscribe, that you're going to follow Julie and I as we travel around Europe and 
sharing our experiences and expenses with you, as well as experiences and expenses of other uh, expats and nomads that we encounter along the way. And if you'd like to be part of our um, video uh, collection and want to produce a video with Julie and I about your expat life or nomad life, we'd love to hear from you. Just email us at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com and we could work out a collaboration to uh, talk about your life and you can share your expenses with our community. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao.